Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Germany once again and we're going to go to Berlin this time. I was very recently in Germany of course and I brought back a good few beers to review. So you will see a kind of mini series of beer reviews that was filmed in Bamberg at some point and I've also got some beers that I, uh, I bought in Berlin and took down to try with Daniel as well and some of them I did manage to bring back to Sweden with me. So I hope you enjoy uh, seeing a few more German beers reviewed on the channel for you over the next little while. But for this one we've got quite a special Berlin beer. This is the one that was brewed for the Berlin Beer Week in 2018. So there's a Berlin Beer Week festival that happens usually at, towards the end of July every year and this is the beer that they brewed for the one this year in 2018. So for this one we're going to have a taste of that one. It's a 5.5% Pilsner style beer, a dry hopped pills from what I understand and it's brewed by Heiden Peters and Hops and Barley Hausbrauerei, both of whom come from Berlin. I actually did film two reviews from Heiden Peters when I was in Bamberg, but this is the very first taste of a beer from Hops and Barley House Barley that I'm having. So looking forward to this one. The Pilsner style beer is a little bit of an underrated style these days. The Germans, of course, are capable of doing some very, very nice Pilsner beers. The style originally is from the Czech Republic, but created by a German brewer. And um, but it's one a lot of people just want IPAs and things these days. But I always love going back to the you know the likes of the German Helles, the Dunkels, the Schwarz beers, and of course the Pilsners as well. So looking forward to this beer. Curious to see how it turns out and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery websites the link to my future reviews that you will definitely see from Hyden Peters and the one that, can, that hopefully you will see from Hops and Barley House Barley as I said this is my very first encounter with them but you will see two reviews come up shortly from Hyden Peters and um, I'll also put the link into the Berlin Beer Week Festival as well that you can check out but there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the video and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Hyden Peters first off then, on to my brewery notes. So Hyden Peters was founded by Johannes Hyden Peter, who is apparently known as the brewer with the cap that you, you'll always just see him wearing this, but he bought this cap from a woman in the Winterfeldmark in Berlin, Schöneberg, and um, she apparently made caps from old uh, flower sacks, but when you see this thing, it actually looks really quite cool and quite fashionable actually not that I don't think I would wear one myself I'm not going to steal his thunder if you like but um, it was it's apparently that's his trademark the brewer in the cap but before brewing Johannes was an artist and he graduated from the Kunsthochschule in Berlin if I've pronounced that correctly basically the art the 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 College of Art, I guess you could say, if you wanted to translate it into English. But he apparently tried a porter from the Norch Organic Brewery in Bremen and was really blown away by it. And when he was drinking this beer, he went online and bought a book and then started to brew his own beer. But his friends tried the beer that he was making and gave him very positive feedback. And it was after this that he decided to set up his own brewery, which he eventually did in Market Halle 9, which is a really well-known bio-organic market project that you'll find in the Kreuzberg area of the city. But with €10,000, he set up a small brewery in the basement of the market hall and he brews somewhere between 1200 and 1500 litres of beer per week and he sells the beer in the market and also to various retailers around Berlin and a little bit further afield. He does apparently still work a day job in an art gallery though so this one um, it's kind of it's a sort of part-time business I guess you would say but his beers are pretty good. Out of the beers that I tried from them the Thirsty Ladies are reviewed that you'll see come up that's a really interesting sort of um, kind of sour Belgian style paleo that but the New England IPA that I tried I thought was, uh, was very, very nice as well. And it was kind of interesting to try a German uh, brewed New England IPA as well. So try some of the Hyden Peters beers and see what you think for yourself. But that's all you really need to know about them just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website and you can follow them on Facebook and things like that and Instagram and keep up to date with all the latest goings on. So on to the second brewery then. So this one is the Hops and Barley House Barley. As I mentioned to you as well, this brewery is based in Berlin and it's owned by a guy called Philip Brokamp. But he founded, founded a very small 
small brew pub and a small former butcher shop which can be found right next to the C1 Dach Kites uh, near the Boxhagener Platz in the Friedrichshain area of the city. But in his brew pub he serves homemade bread, lard, cheese and sausages and all of these kind of things and has his own 5 hectolitre brewery and tanks. But apparently Philip moved to Berlin in 2007 to live with his girlfriend and um, he apparently had to put in quite a bit of work to actually get this old shop up and running. I think it's it said in the article, another again I was reading Hopf and Helden about these breweries, but it said in the article there that this butchers had closed down in 1997. Um, but he actually had to uh, do put in quite a bit of work to get the old shop ready, and then he had to expand his brewery in 2009 because he couldn't keep up with the demand for his beer, even though he was actually selling the beer only in his own pub. So apparently it's a very, very nice little bar. Hopefully the next time I go to Berlin I can check it out. Um, but apparently it's taken over regularly by the um, Borussia Mönchengladbach fans when they come to the city. It's quite a popular um, little destination when it comes to um to football fans and things like that when there's some away days and stuff like that which is quite cool and um, but yeah on the pictures that i saw of it it looks very nice apparently philip is a very very likable guy as well so maybe when i go there i can have a little chat with him and things like that and maybe film an interview or something that would be quite cool it is always cool to go and visit these little um quirky german things of course it's a very kind of long-standing tradition in germany that you have these little places that just brew their beer and that's the only place that you can get it. You can sometimes get the growlers and things, uh, the big bottles and that to take away but it is quite common that you can only uh, get these beers in the brow houses. That's something I always love about Germany and uh, reviewing these different beers. So yeah, really really cool this one. So as I say, this was the beer that he brewed together with um, with Heiden Peters for the festival. It was brewed actually at Heiden Peters Brewery in the Market Hall 9 and then canned obviously as well. So yeah, that's always you really need to know both breweries just now if you want to learn a little bit more again about hops and barley i'll put their website in the description below and you can follow them on facebook and things like this but let's get the computer off just now and we'll get on with the actual tasting of this beer itself so there you can see there is the um the it's almost like they're putting a nail into the uh, the top of this bottle here just to open it up on the back there there you can see there is the the Haydn painter symbol there, I'll put it this way so you can actually see it, that would be a good idea. There you can see, there is the hops and barley and Haydn Peter symbols. You can see Berlin Beer Week. You can also see the Vehrman on the wrong side of the can. You can see here the Vehrman symbol, YCH hops. And I wasn't sure about this last one, if it's the company, it was the um, Wild Goose. Don't know if they're a yeast specialist or uh, something like that. But yeah, this beer was brewed in Market Hall 9 in Eisenbahnstrasse, which as I mentioned to you is in the Kreuzberg district in uh, in Berlin. But yeah, it should be a really nice beer. It says best before the 31st of December 2018. I will say to you, you know, I'm filming this beer review for you at the start of uh, November. So it's not, this beer isn't in its freshest, but it should still be okay. You can smell some of the lovely fruity characters coming off this one. I do wonder if there's a bit of mosaic in there actually just going by the aroma that's coming out of this beer. But as you can see we'll get this guy out and we'll get it in to the glass. There we go. Oh that does actually smell really quite nice. So yeah as you can see with this beer it's poured kind of a hazy colour actually. You do get hazy pills beers or hazy as it says on the side here it's a lager beer. Um, which just means it's kind of it has to be stored at cold temperatures when it's fermenting. If I'm remembering light, right, um, I forget which way around it is, but you know the ones that are fermented, it, it's either uh, I can't remember if it's top fermented or uh, bottom fermented beers actually, and um, that the the lager beers are, but the lager beers always have to be fermented and um, at a colder temperature, usually about four degrees, to let the yeast kind of do their work. But you can see with this one, it's poured a nice hazy golden straw colour there. You can see there's a solid finger of a frothy but well actually kind of bumpy white head on this one there and um, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see it is uh, you know it's, it kind of it's the exact it's the right colour you'd expect for a pills but um or a lager beer but um yeah nice and hazy which is always good so let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one yeah so with this beer Definitely a nice little bit of bready malt in there. The Viamin malts, of course, or Viamin, I should say. Get my pronunciations right. The Viamin malts 
from Bamberg, very very famous malt company of course, and they actually do have a little pilot brewery now. You will see a video review of one of their little uh, one of their beers that they brew um, up on the channel at some point in the near future. I did film a review of one of their beers and it was very good, um, but you can smell that nice smooth bready malty quality in there. And the YCH hops, of course, they're an American company, if I'm remembering correctly, the Yakima Valley in California. But for me, this one, um, I think a nice, there's a nice little bit of a passion fruity or mango note to this beer. I think there's some citra in here. I thought initially when I opened up there was a little bit of mosaic. I think there's a little touch of a tangerine orange in there or something like that. But yeah, it does smell very, very nice, this beer. Quite a bit of fruit, as I say, a little bit of mango, a little bit of passion fruit, maybe some sort of tangerine orangey notes. Yeah, nice little bit of grassy and floral quality from the hops too, you'll always get a bit of that. And underneath, it's got a little bit of a... Yeah, it's got a little bit of a, a kind of biscuity quality to it as well, which is nice. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience when it comes to these nice craft beers. But let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. You know, it's the Pilsner, the sort of lager Pilsner beers, they're not going to blow your head off in terms of the aroma. This one has a nice juicy fruity quality to it, but other than that, it has everything you would expect of the German uh, lager beer. So let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Berlin Beer Week 2018 beer brewed by Haydn Peters and uh, Hops and Barley House Plowry, both from Berlin. Let's get stuck in. Slange, school. Prost. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. It said in the back here intense, uh, intense pulse lupulin, IPL. So it's probably meant to be an Indian, that's probably a good point, it's probably an Indian pale lager this one. I never thought about that actually when I was looking at the can, that's just come to me now when I've seen IPL. So this one, you could probably say this is an Indian pale lager to be fair, it's just when the hops hit me. And then I saw IPL, I was like, hang on a second, yeah. But yeah, I'll say straight away, this is a nice beer. If somehow you still come across this one, then have a go at it because they've done a nice job with this. It would be cool to see if Haydn Peters and Hops and um, Hops and Barley did some sort of deal to keep this going because this is a really really nice Pilsner beer. If you're interested in the Pils style, of course, um, there's um, Munich Brew Mafia. Um, they have a Citra Pils, which is really, really good. And a, is it Citra Delic or something it was called? Um, that's a really beautiful Pilsner beer, sort of new IPL sort of Pilsner beer that you're going to find from Munich as well. I mean, this, this beer actually does remind me quite a little bit of that one, to be honest. Yeah, that's a really nice beer. As I say, if you get the chance to try this, have a go at it. I'm just going to put the rest of this in because probably this is quite an easy one to drink. I might even get through the full thing in this review. But yeah, let's try and break this down then. So with this beer, you've got a nice hoppy kick to it pretty much as soon as you take the beer in. You can feel with this one, there's a nice little bit of that pale malt just blankets the middle of your palate, but there's a good balance with the Pilsner malt as well. I don't think it's exclusively Pilsner malt that's in this one because the malt base does just have a little bit more thickness to it. But that said, the Viaman malts in my ex in the experience that I've had so far, they've always been very very smooth, and this beer does have that typical. I like to call it the German Brauhaus smoothness. I've always found German beers to be very, very smooth. And I love that when you try the IPAs and the IPLs and stuff like that. These new styles that are uh, starting to be brewed in Germany. I love that, how they always re retain that smoothness that you expect from the likes of the Helles and the Doppelbox and the and the Dunkels and things like that. I always love that when you get these sort of new age um, German beers. But for me, this one definitely has a little bit of that kind of nice, smooth, um, white bready presence to it. The Germans, incidentally, they do some of the best bread in the world. The German bakery is uh, quite rightly very famous, in my opinion. But yeah, nice sort of bready, pilsnery malt base. And this one, a little bit of biscuit sweetness in the middle of your palate there. And as you go further into the aftertaste, I think it does start to lean a little bit more 
towards that slightly more biscuity pilsner quality in the beer. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little touch of a tight, a little bit of earthy bitterness in there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, it, it smooths out a little bit. Nice little bit of spicy floral aromaticity on the, the front corners of the palate, then around the very front curve of the tongue, you've got a nice little bit of a lighter um, kind of grassy note to this beer as well. But yeah, I like how everything is um, is going together in this one. I think in terms of the hops, I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, Citra and Mosaic that are in this one. I've got a feeling those are the two hops involved here. I always like playing guess the hops with beers when uh, when you don't know what ones are in there. But for me, that I'm, I reckon that is what's in there with this one. Um, if you just go behind the front curve of the palate, of course, as I always say, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those nice, juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And for me, this one's got a good little bit of a... It's got a little bit of a mango -y presence in there. It's got a nice... Um, yeah, a nice little bit of a mango -y presence. There's a little tiny touch of grapefruit in there, but not very much at all. But mainly mangoes, which makes me think there's some citron here. And I think there's a little touch of um, orange or something like that. Um, the other one, I, there's something in my head saying there's a little bit of galaxy in there, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit, I think, of an orangey tangerine quality to this one. Um, the, the main difference I've always found with the Amarillo and the... Of course, you've got Mandarina Bavaria, of course, when it's Germany, they could be using Mandarina Bavaria to get those orangey flavours. That's another variable in there, but I think there's a little touch of orange there on the front part of the palate there. And there's also, there's almost, when you go further into the aftertaste, there's a little bit more of a, a kind of fruity complexity comes out of this one. I'd like to say there's a little bit of a an almost uh, blueberry, kind of a light, almost lychee type flavour to this one, which is quite interesting. Yeah, so for me, this beer has a nice, um, I would say the fruity aftertaste in this one's really nice as well. I want to say there's a little bit of lychee, but I'm also getting a little bit of blueberry, I think, on the front part of the palate as well. So lychee is usually one of the complexities that you'll get from um, from citra, I think, and then mosaic, it will give you the blueberry. Um, but there's also there's maybe a little bit of pineapple or something in there as well, actually. It does have a nice sort of tropical fruity edge to it, this one. Some nice tangerine notes, like I was saying, a little bit of mango, a little touch of grapefruit. There's a good little bit of fruitiness. Um, going on in this beer, which I think is really nice, um, and it's you know obviously I think it's American when it's YCH hops, it is American hops they're using in this one. When I say Mandarina Bavaria, going by the flavour profile of this one, I think that isn't um, so likely. But overall, as I say, this is a really nice uh, lager beer, and it's, it's very very easy to drink for 5.5 percent as well. It's got a hell of a hop kick to it. I will say that about this one. I think this one might be up somewhere around the 50 IBUs mark, um, it has got a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to it that, so yeah, just have a taste of this beer for yourself and see what you think. I think they've done a good job with this one. Pardon me, certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink that again, but if this is only going to be a one-off festival beer, with the quality of this one, I think that is um, a little bit of a shame actually. It would be cool if they did this beer again, so as I say, hopefully Haydn Peters or, uh, and can do some sort of deal with Hops and Barley House Brewery that they keep doing this beer. That would be really, really cool. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, fairly light body. This one is at the top end of light body, though maybe just very slightly pushing mid-bodied. Carbonation is uh, is very, very smooth. Nice little, um, nice little bit of a, it's got a mix of an oily mouthfeel to it, this one, and also a wet mouthfeel, I think. But overall, it's a very, very nicely done beer, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. Like I said, IBUs, um, good little hoppy bitter kick to this one. I think about 50 IBUs in this beer. Nice little bit of smoothness and slight sweetness to the malt base as well, and a lot of uh, nice tropical juicy fruity character as well. But overall, very, very nice beer, and I'm glad that I got to review this one for you here on the channel. So I hope you've enjoyed my take on it. Let's leave it at that for this. So this one was the Berlin Beer Week 2018 beer, 5.5% uh, lager type beer, India Pale Lager I think is probably the best way to describe this one. It does kind of say on the back, intense uh, pulse lupulin in there. 
and I just thought IPL, India Pale Lager, didn't click until I actually saw that after I tasted the beer. But yeah, really nice beer, this one brewed by Hayden Peters from uh, from Markahol Noin in Kreuzberg and uh, the Hops and Barley Brewer, a uh, house, house brewer I should say, from uh, Friedrichshain in, uh, in Berlin too. So yeah, two really nice Berlin breweries involved in this one. It's been a pleasure to review this for you. Like I said, there will be more German beer reviews coming for you over the next little while. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. So as always, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Hyde and Peters and from the Hops and Barley House Brewery. Hopefully I can return to them both in the near future. But you will see more Hyde and Peters reviews and you will see more German beer reviews over the next little while. But until the next time, slange just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers, skull, slange, prost.